Now we've got some more graphs using implicit differentiation. So this time we've got x squared plus 4x squared equal 4. So again, what's our domain and range? So small, if that is 0, and that's going to be the smallest, and we're adding the 2, then x would have to be between minus 2 and 2. That's, that's the largest values it could take as opposed when that is 0. And again, if x is 0, well, y squared has to be between minus 1 and 1. So there's our there's our restriction on our values in terms of this, because it's, it's subtracting there. So, other critical points. Well, where's x equal to 0? So what's our y values? We get y is equal to plus or minus 1. y is equal to 0. x is equal to plus or minus 2. So it goes through four points there, and it's going to exist between those points. Let's do, you do our differentiation. And let's have a look at and view the gradient there. So x squared becomes 2x, 4y squared becomes 8y dy dx, 4 becomes 0. Rearranging dy dx is equals minus x on 4y. So we take the 2x across, divide by 8y, and we get that. So again, where are we getting stationary points when x is equal to 0? So, and where are we vertical tangents when y is equal to 0. So we can see we're going to get vertical tangents there, we're going to get stationary points there. So what does it look like? Well, we get a point where we get stationary points, vertical tangents, and stationary points again. And all the values are between them. So it must go from that point and become stationary there. So that's where we get our curved nature. So where it comes in and becomes vertical there, and must go back down to a stationary point there. So this is where we're getting the shape. Now this is the shape of an ellipse, and we'll do more work on ellipses and and hyperbolas in our next topic on conics. Um, so we'll see a lot more of these. But this is what a, an ellipse starts to look like, and we can see how we can sketch it with uh, using the implicit differentiation, and by establishing the nature of what are the values, where are they going through critical points and what are um, what's happening to its gradient as it goes through so and you can see well as well what your gradient is going to do when they're both positive here where x and y are both positive it's going to be a negative gradient so you can see why the gradient will be falling there and when it's that x is positive and y is negative well that would be a gr positive gradient so that's why you can see where the gradient rises at those points. So you can see, if you're asked, I don't know if you might be asking, well, how do you know it's going to be going there? That's why. When x is positive, x is negative, y is positive, well, that's going to make that positive. That's why it's rising. And then they're both negative. The negative out the front makes sure it's falling as we move there. So that's how we graph that one. Let's have a look at x squared, x squared minus 4x, 4y squared is equal to 4. So again, we establish, looking to establish those three things again. What's our critical points? Y is equal to zero. We get X is plus or minus two. X is equal to zero. We can't define it. So there's no Y axis there. There's nothing on the Y axis. Um, what's our domain? Well, again, X can be only between negative two, or less than negative two, greater than positive two. Because if that's zero, that's what we get with an, with an inequality there, because x squared has to be greater than four. But having said that, because x squared is is greater than, we're going to get all real values of y. That's not a, there's no restriction there. What does it look like at our function? Well, we said we had uh, we can't get a stationary. We look we do our differentiation first. We get x on 4y, we, and we know x can't be equal to 0 because it's not part of our domain. So there's no stationary points, but again, when y is equal to 0, our dy dx is undefined, so we get a vertical tangent. So we get our vertical tangents happening there. So what happens here? Well, as x gets larger and y gets larger, it's going to start to approach the line y is equal to x, half x. So we can start to play around and see that's going to be the case. Um, so we can because you can divide that by four, you can play around, and then and same thing here. It's going to have those asymptotes. As I said, like we'll see more of this and our, and establishing our asymptotes in the conic section. 
x cubed plus y cubed equals to 1. So let's have a look at this one. Firstly, domain and range. It uh, can be all real x, can be all real y, because x can be, even though it's equal to 1, and y is equal to 0, there's x can be any value there to get it back to 1, because we can have uh, we can have cube values there, it's not a problem. And because they, they can get larger, y can be negative in this case too. It's not like it, when it was squared, we, we, we start to have a problem. So, so it's... We, that's there's no restriction to get it back to one because x can be positive, y can be negative, and vice versa. Critical points: well, when x is equal to zero, y is equal to one, so we get going through the y-axis there, and when x y is equal to zero, x is equal to one, so we get in through the x-axis there. Um, getting our stationary points, so or well, if they're stationary points, so we can differentiate implicitly. And then derivative comes down to minus x squared on y squared. So when x is equal to zero, y is equal to uh, dy dx is equal to zero. So when at the y-axis we've got a stationary point, and when it's a y when y is equal to zero, it's undefined. So we're able to get the situation where it's going to have um, a, a, a vertical tangent at the x-axis point where it crosses the x-axis. But also when we look at this situation, as x gets larger and y gets larger, because there's no restriction, what happens here? Well, as x approaches infinity and y, appro y approaches infinity, it's going to approach minus 1. Because it's going to get larger, they're both going to get larger together. So we're going to approach minus 1 because we've got negative out the front. So that means it's going to approach along the line y is equal to minus x. So their gradient's going to get closer to minus 1. So, so if you want to look at it, that's that's what it would be explicitly. So that's where our, our, gra our, gradient, our function starts to be drawn up there. So you, again, it's symmetrical in, in along the line y is equal to x because you can swap x and y over and it doesn't change. So that's why I've drawn y is equal to x in there. Because if you can swap your x and y, and it remains the same, wait on, that's an inverse, that's it's an inverse function of itself. So you can start to see that nature. So how do I know that it looks like that and gets that nice shape? Because it's an, inf in, it's an inverse function of itself, because x and y can swap over. So we can look, start to look at that as well to help us graph our functions. So there we go, that's that, that one. And this one, x squared plus y squared plus xy is equal to 3. So this one's a little bit harder. But again, get your critical points. Where's x equal to 0? Where's y is equal to 0? Establishes our points there, where it crosses the x and y axis. What's our gradient look like? Well, again, differentiate implicitly. Collect dy dx and we get minus 2x plus y over 2y plus x. So we can start to see that when 2x plus y is equal to 0, okay, that's what will be equal to 0, we'll have a stationary point. So that's where, the, where we get this. It's where it intersects with the function. There. And it's vertical tangent when 2y, when it intersects with 2y plus x or x plus 2y. So that's where you're getting that one there. Other information we need. So here's, here's how we can solve that and get that as well. So where's 2x plus y equal to 0? y is equal to minus 2x. So we, if we sub minus 2x in there, that's where we get where it intersects there at plus or minus 1. So that gives us our values there for our horizontal tangents. For our vertical tangents, again, can't be equal to zero, so that happens when x is equal to 2y. We sub it in, we get plus or minus 1, which gives us minus 2, 1, and 2, 1. So that's where we're going to get those points where it started to intersect. So there's, our, there's those points, 1, minus 2, minus 1, minus 2, 2, minus 1, 1, minus 2, Minus two one, so that's that's our points where we got those. Again, so again you can look at that and say, well, where's it going to be positive? Where's it falling? 
where's it rising falling rising there not an easy one and we won't see these sorts of things very often but we've got to be able to come into play and know what to do when they come into play by getting the critical points getting their stationary or vertical stationary tangents and horizontal tangents and vertical tangents and being able to de determine if they're going to have some sort of nature that we can play around with again we have a look here if we swap the x and y's just before we finish if we swap the x and y's over we're going to have the same function so again use that if that comes into play with these functions you know it's going to be uh, an inverse function so you could draw up y is equal to x and have it symmetrical about y is equal to x there so technically it's an ellipse going through that axis of y is equal to x